Hi everyone, so I have a new camera. Um, I haven't fully set it up or got the settings quite right, but um, I did want to try to record a couple of videos in the meantime because I really want to try to educate myself properly on this camera because it is so much more complicated than anything I've used before. So it's the Panasonic Lumix uh, G85. I can record in very high quality and it's, um, there's a, a bunch of reasons I went with it, but here we are. So what I'm going to do is kind of a get ready with me, but for face products, since I already did my eyes, I had to take up my make, take my makeup off that I was wearing earlier because it was so busted looking. So I'm going to redo it. I'm going to get use this foundation again. The, um, the problem I had earlier, I don't believe was due to the foundation, but rather my face. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing is I have a lot of moisture that I've applied. So the places that makeup kind of breaks down on me, I'm going to go ahead and blot. I mean, it's serious. Um, but the dry areas, I'm just going to leave alone. So that's most of my face. So this I bought on sale. It's been on sale for a while. I don't know why I decided to take a chance on it. I thought the color might be good and the shade is 10 Ivory Light. And I think in the, so this is the Genius Gel. The concentrate I think may be the shade 10, maybe a little bit lighter, but I don't know. So I thought this was gonna be too pink for me, but I've been wearing it and swatching it and it looks good. All right, so I'm just gonna da -da -da. What I'm looking for is to take away redness, even out my skin tone, get it a little bit lighter, closer to my next shade. This is the first foundation I have ever used where I feel like one pump is not enough. So I actually have been using closer to two, which is unheard of. A lot of times I use just half a pump in a foundation. Um, I've also been enjoying the uh, Eco Tools Eco Tools sponge. Um, I had been using it uh, with the flat side before, but I really like the round side. It doesn't seem to absorb much foundation, and is a lot easier to clean. And I like the finish it's giving giving me. Can't really talk. And I've got the sponge like right up on my mouth. So yeah, when um, I had this on earlier today, I did not have, I only did my sun, my moisturizing sunscreen and a hydrating primer. I didn't do my like face oil before that. And where I have dermatitis underneath my lip, it was just like flaking off. So it's a very cloudy day. I'm using natural light. I don't know what I'm doing with this camera. Took me forever just to get it to focus the way I wanted it. <laughs> I mean, the amount of settings for autofocus on this thing alone is insane. So I'm gonna use, is this the one I want? Uh, we'll go with it. I'm gonna use, let's see, will it focus up here? Eventually, oh it does. Oh, and it focused on all my nice chip nail polish. I'm gonna use the Age Rewind uh, Brightening Shade. I don't think I've used this one in quite a while. So it's probably gonna take a while. Oh, that's pink. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been finding that my regular like tart shaped tape and Mac Pro Long Wear concealer, which have always have been for a while my favorite under eye concealers, are just too dry looking. So this Maybelline tends to crease a little bit more on me, but I'm thinking it's gonna be a little less dry looking. My face is so dry, so much drier than it ever has been before. It's been really challenging to figure out how to make things look good. So in case you're curious, I use the em Embryolisse like, Concentrate first all over my face, and that probably explains the crazy blotting sheet. And then I use the Peter Thomas Roth Max Sheer All Day Moisture Defense Lotion SPF 30. This has been the 
SPF that's moisturizing and works well under makeup for me. I found that isn't the easiest combination of attributes. So should we like zoom in and look to see how everything looks? Let's see. Oh, that's backwards. Let's see. Is it in focus? I don't know. We'll see when I edit, I suppose. So right off, straight off the bat, it looks really nice. Um, I don't want a lot of coverage, so this is good for me. If I can get the right powder situation, I think, I think I'm really gonna like it. At least right now with my current state of affairs of dryness. So I think next I am going to try, it does feel kind of tacky, but I've also got all that like really moist stuff underneath. Um, since I don't really have anything else to do, it's hard to just kind of sit and wait. Um, I think I'm going to put on a liquid blush, so let's do that first. So I'm going to use the L'Oreal Visible Lift, Lift Blur. And what's this one called? A soft peach, even though it's in a pink tube. It's a little strange. But then again, the product is not really peach anyway, so I guess it makes sense. I decided I, um, since I wanted to avoid powdering my face, that I would do, I had planned on a liquid cream blush. And this one's like, what I like about it is that it's very heavy on the silicone, so it kind of just glides on. And it's pretty sheer, so even for me, it's not super easy to go overboard. You have to try a little bit harder. Um, I could do a couple swatches since we're here. So I'll show you what they look like wet, and then as we go, I will also show you what it looks like once it's dried down, since some foundations change a lot from wet to dry. This is the Kat Von D Locket Foundation in L41. Isn't that a funny color? Um, this is the Marc Jacobs Genius Gel in number 10, fairly, no, not fairly light, light ivory, <laughs> ivory light, oh my gosh. This is the Lancome 10 Idol, Idol Ultra in 90. Oh, by the way, they reformulated, now has a ton of alcohol, will not be repurchasing, even though I'm up near the end. This one is Wet n' Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Porcelain, and this one is Milani Conceal and Perfect in 00A Porcelain. So, they don't look so different right now. We will see, focus, focus. We will see how they look after, I think it's getting kind of dark. Wonder if I can change my exposure here. Oh, hopefully that's not too drastic. I just brightened it up a little because I feel like I'm pretty rapidly losing light. It is a very cloudy gray day and um, the sun, sets very early in Connecticut during the winter. So I think next um, I am going to attempt a little bit of powder. So I'm going to use something else that I got that is new. I'm trying to share some of the new things I have purchased lately but haven't necessarily mentioned in the haul. This is the MAC Next to Nothing. Look in the right place, Nicole. MAC Next to Nothing Pre Pressed Powder in Light, which looks a little dark to me. Um, it does not have much pigmentation and but the the reason I picked it up is because it has a, a bit of a sheen to it. So I'm looking for some way to set my foundation with my face being so dry without it going really matte and looking more dry. So I'm going to take my Wayne Goss um, airbrush brush and hopefully just very, ooh, that was a lot, <laughs> very lightly set some areas without them looking too dry. 
Historically, I've not had very good luck setting my under eyes with anything except for Laura Mercier loose setting powder, which I don't own at the moment, NARS uh, light reflecting pressed powder in translucent crystal, um, and that, but that's been looking pretty dry on me lately. I'm gonna try to tap that out a little, get a little powder. Last time, <laughs> Last time I tried to use this powder, I feel like it didn't really set very well. Highlights. So another thing, I had been thinking about buying this foundation, or this foundation, this highlight for so, so long, years I think. It's Max uh, Mineralized Skin Finish uh, in Lightscapade. So this was one of those kind of like old, old recommendations. Uh, for very fair skin and it's got so many pretty colors in it So I finally the last 25% uh, off sale I purchased it now Let's see if we can find a brush to get this to actually show up Decently on my face because I've been having a little bit of trouble making it really look like much So it feels like a pretty subtle subtle highlight it definitely works on my skin tone there's no doubt about that so I got a when I ordered this it was during the Cyber Monday thing where they were doing like little just cycling um, I'm gonna close this up while I talk free like deluxe samples depending with the code cyber depending on what type, part of the day it was so this is um, was with that code, that promo code, which is not really very special for Cyber Monday, but it was actually something I wanted, so that's why I went ahead and bought the foundation when I did using Ebates, link below, um, and and got this because I was going to buy this anyway. So it's the Stila um, Stay All Day Liquid Lipstick in Patina. I had seen uh, the Taylor use this in an old video because I've been pretty much just watching her lately because I don't know if she's speaking to me and I really wanted it. And I missed out on Ulta sale though because they had them like almost half price. But I'm making a mess. But if you are looking for a Stila liquid lipstick to stay all day, <clears throat> uh, Sephora has their weekly wow, the same price that they were on sale for during um, Ulta's like Black Friday, whatever weekend thing they had. So they're like $13 or something. So anyway, um, I feel like that looks, I, I feel like I look normal and now I look crazy. Mm -hmm. This is one of those colors that I just don't really love the look on me. I feel like a brighter or a darker color works better than this kind of like mid-toned, but then on me. Did I mention the shade was patina? I don't remember. Um, then mid-toned end up just looking kind of weird. So I will share this with you. The Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit. This is, oh, what's it called? Rebel Rose and that's the Stila in Patina. Once they dry down, they're very similar. The Wet n Wild is a tiny bit lighter. So should we look at these swatches again? Do they look any different to you? They look different to me. So again, this one has not changed at all. Kat Von D uh, Locket in 41, Marc Jacobs Genius Gel in 10. I don't, I don't feel like that changes all that much. Um, Lancome 10 Adult Ultra, in 90N, Wet n Wild Photo Focus in Porcelain, and then I feel what like what oxidizes the most is the Milani Conceal and Perfect in 00A. I feel like that one does change a fair amount. The others I don't feel like are that different. Maybe the Lancome looks a little bit more peach, but other than that, I feel like they look pretty similar to how they are when they're wet. So anyway, um, this has been a pretty long video and I did not really 
do a whole lot. Yeah, I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions, comments below. Um, I think I'm also probably going to be recording an empties video with this makeup on and um, with these settings on the camera, but hopefully perhaps in the videos coming up after that, then maybe the, the settings will be a little bit different. Maybe then I'll have some lights and I won't be subject to the clouds and varying color temperatures of the light coming in through the windows. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully look forward to that perhaps. So thank you guys so, so much for watching as always. I really appreciate every like, every comment, every view, you know, it really, it makes it worthwhile for me to make these videos. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.